What is up, you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you were new to the channel, I am Gold Pony, and today we are in the newly refreshed 2020 Subaru Legacy, courtesy of Apple Subaru in York, PA. Once again, I am excited for this one. Brand new tech for 2020. Definitely looking more like a Tesla style display on the inside. So Let's go ahead and jump right into this one. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so there will be several different trim levels for the 2020 Legacy. First one being the base trim, starting at $22,745. Premium, starting at $24,995. Sport, which actually is the one we are in today, this one is going to start at $26,945. Limited, starting at $29,745. Limited XT, starting at $34,195. And lastly, the Touring XT, for for $35,895. And so as far as the power plant goes, there's actually two different setups for the 2020 Legacy. As you can imagine with the XT trim levels, that is gonna be the more powerful engine setup, but not the one we have today. Powering the non-XT trim levels will be a 2.5 liter horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine, putting out 182 horsepower at 5,800 RPM, 176 pound-feet of torque available at 4,400 RPM. Power is gonna be sent to all four wheels, of course, through Subaru's legendary symmetrical all-wheel drive system. That power is sent to the ground through a CVT with paddle shifters actually, which you know we will be testing out in a little bit here. But all in all, MPG numbers are gonna come in at 27 the city, 35 on the highway, taking 87 octane or regular unleaded fuel, helping to save a little bit there. So before we do that paddle shifter test, let me touch on the other engine setup for the XT trim levels. That is going to be a 2.4 liter turbocharged N intercooled horizontally opposed Subaru Boxer engine once again 260 horsepower available at 5600 rpm 277 pound-feet of torque available from the power band of 2000 to 4800 rpm again sent to all four wheels through a CVT on this one giving you MPG numbers coming in at 24 in the city 32 on the highway but once again taking regular unleaded fuel sometimes with the upgraded engine you have to jump up to premium but not with the legacy so that is pretty cool but either way you guys know what we have to do next let me put the shifter all the way to the back and to the left that is going to give me full manual shift mode here with the cvt so it's kind of like yeah we'll see but let's go ahead and test out the paddle shifters and see how quickly they react for us here <laughs> I don't know what to say about it. It is a CVT, so technically you don't have any gears to shift through, but they do kind of react quickly, and I suppose it would be useful for some engine braking, perhaps in the snow. That is kind of what Subarus are built for, for powering through the snow in those kind of climates. But, but so I would imagine most people probably are not going to use those paddle shifters anyways. But another thing I wanted to point out, we are stopped at a red light right now. The engine did shut off, so it will do that for you, helping you save a little bit of MPGs there, so that's kind of nice. But Let's go ahead and try a regular acceleration without the paddle shifters. And again, we do not have the turbocharged engine set up today, but let's go ahead and see how quickly we can get this new 2020 Subaru Legacy here up to speed. Here we go. Huh. Actually, not too bad. I'm coming off of driving some subcompacts, so that might have a little bit to do with it, but really, definitely no issues with merging onto the highway. Kind of kind of surprised me there with that acceleration. And you can imagine the turbocharged engine setup is gonna be quite a bit faster, but still, this naturally aspirated boxer engine here is really not all that bad, quite impressed there. And so then to go along with that acceleration, braking is equally important. And so up front, you will find 12.4 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 11.8 inch rear discs. And in my short test drive today, most definitely no issues with coming to a stop. So that is definitely on point. Touching on suspension and handling, the 2020 Legacy actually moves to Subaru's global platform for 2020. Therefore, it is going to be sharing that same platform with other Subarus like the Outback, like the Ascent and the Forester, which not only helps shave a little bit of cost when it comes to producing the Legacy, helping keeping the price down for this particular vehicle, which is always nice. But that new platform compared to the old Legacy is actually quieter and safer. So that is definitely a plus as well. But that platform is also going to use 13% more high strength steel, hence the safer part of what I was just mentioning there 
there. In addition to that, up front, you're gonna get a McPherson strut front suspension with a stabilizer bar. In the back, a double wishbone type rear suspension, again, with the stabilizer bar. And when it comes to the ride quality, definitely on point with the Legacy. Absolutely no issues, and I think I actually said the exact same thing when I just recently test drove the Outback. The ride quality is actually very surprising, almost luxury-like. And again, I haven't read or watched any reviews on this car quite yet because I always like to give my first impressions, but essentially what I'm getting at is the ride quality is most definitely on point. As far as the steering feel goes, it is pretty much as expected, so no issues there. It's pretty on par for the course. Cabin noise, I guess it's a little bit on the louder side, but again, it's pretty much as expected for this price point, comparatively speaking to the other vehicles in its class. So again, no issues there and touching all visibility. I could see absolutely great out the back window there. Definitely no issues when it comes to visibility and side mirrors are pretty cool too. There's actually a small little Subaru logo in the side mirrors there. And I'll get a little bit more into that in a second here. So let's go ahead and jump right into the exterior of this new slightly refreshed 2020 Subaru Legacy. All right, you guys, here it is, the 2020 Subaru Legacy. As I have mentioned, it has been refreshed for 2020. Up front, you're going to find LED headlights actually for every single trim level, even the bottom trim level, even the base. That is amazing. Well done, Subaru, for that. Steering responsive headlights are actually going to come on the limited trim level and up. And you are going to find LED fog lights for the sport trim level and up. That is just below there. That's what you're looking at right now. Overall, I love the black accents on the sport trim level. They look very at home on this car, especially in this red exterior that we have here. Black housings around the headlights as well. All in all, the front end ties together very well. Definitely looks good in my opinion. The black accents actually continue around to the side. Take a look at these side mirrors. Black finishes are going to come with the base trim level and the Sport, and the Sport black finish is actually a crystal black finish in case you were curious. And another thing, just like the Outback I recently reviewed, these chrome window surrounds, I love how they kind of tie in with the side mirrors. They kind of just continue out like the side mirrors are sitting on a shard of chrome or something. So I absolutely love that design element. And of course, body colored side mirrors will come standard for all other trim levels but the Touring, because that Touring trim level, or Touring XT I should say, is gonna give you a satin chrome finish. So that is pretty cool there. Power adjustable side mirrors will come standard with integrated turret signals on the premium trim level and up in case you were curious. But let's now zoom out a little bit. I wanna show you guys the wheels here. 17 by seven inch steel wheels with covers will come with the base trim level 17 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys with the premium then you're going to have 18 by 7.5 inch aluminum alloys for all other trim levels design will differ slightly for instance you see these black five spoke wheels coming with the sport trim level again just to continue with the black accents essentially but let's go ahead and make our way to the back you guys are going to see that shark fin antenna up top there also like these black accents on the tail lights gotta love that to tie it all together this rear spoiler back here, this is the first thing I wanted to mention. This is the only trim level where you are going to find a rear spoiler. That is the sport trim level that we have today. So if you wanted one, go with the sport. That's how you're going to get it. But refresh taillights are going to come with the 2020 Legacy. You guys can see that there. Also zooming out a little bit, a refreshed rear bumper as well. And there's going to be some black, extra black finishes, I should say, near the bottom for the sport trim level. As far as the exhaust setup goes, single exhaust outlet for the non-XT trim levels, dual exhaust outlets for the XT trims. And in case you were curious, it is actually under there it is tucked away on the driver's side back there so you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip All right, so since we are now around back, as far as opening that rear trunk goes, there actually is a button on the key fob. So if you like, simply press that. There also is a rubberized bottom back there as well. So the alternative is you could simply just press that, but either way, once opened up, cargo capacity is gonna come in at 15.1 cubic feet. Did wanna also point out there are actually some grocery hooks in that cargo area, some cargo lighting, as well as some in-floor storage. And it's kind of compartmentalized as well. So there's some tray areas within 
that in-floor storage. I thought that was pretty cool. But either way, if you did need some extra space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning those rear seats do fold down for quite a bit of extra space if you needed it. One of the things I loved about when these rear seats folded down is the back of those rear seats, there is a rubberized finish to them. So if you had something a little messier, like maybe a dog and you didn't want their nails scratching up the back of the seats, or maybe you're putting some wheels and tires back there like I often do, and you didn't want that road debris scuffing up against your seats, love that the back of those seats are rubberized. So that is a very nice touch super. Well done thinking of that. Anyways, making your way to the rear leg room, that's going to come in at 39.5 inches, which is actually a good bit. For reference, I'm mean even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did want to also mention for those rear passengers, they are going to find a rear center armrest with cup holders. There's going to be rear air vents back there to keep them comfortable. Heated rear seats are actually going to come with the limited trim level and up if you wanted to go that route. Premium trim level and up is going to give you dual USB rear charging ports. So helping those rear passengers stay connected. That's definitely nice. And as far as comfort goes, I was just fine back there. So no issues there. Now let's make our way to the front seats. There is a six way manually adjustable driver's seat with the base trim level. 10-way power adjustable driver's seat with the premium trim level and up and you will find driver and passenger power adjustable seats if you want with the limited trim level and up and overall as far as the finishes go you're going to get a cloth finish if you go with the base premium or sport trim levels and leather finishes if you go with the limited trim level and up heated front seats are going to come with the premium trim level and up and ventilated front seats are going to come with the touring xt so quite a bit of different seat options dependent upon the trim level that you go with there but let's go ahead and take a look at the steering wheel it is tilt and telescoping it will come leather wrapped for the premium trim level and up and actually heated if you went with the xt trim levels and that is actually available on the non-xt limited as well love heated steering wheels especially in subarus because subarus are known for going off-roading as well as in the snow particularly so heated steering wheel is definitely a plus especially here in pennsylvania it's 40 some degrees this morning it's crazy but either way let's get to the startup here let me show you guys the key everything is actually all located on one side of the key you have lock unlock and again that button to pop the rear hatch and by the way the unlock button is the subaru logo located in the middle of the key there in case you were curious but either way push button start is going to come on the sport trim level and up hallelujah that is what we have today and it's going to be optional on the premium actually so all i am going to do is simply put my foot on the brake and press that engine start button located just by the driver's right knee there and so then once started up, tachometer is on your left, speedometer is on your right. Those gauges will do a full sweep. I'm sure you guys noticed that. And there is a digital display front and center. And there's a couple different things you can scroll through up there, including your radio stations. There's actually a digital speedometer up there as well. Of course, your trip A, trip B, what gear you're in is going to tell you what gear you're in if you're driving on the manual mode with the paddle shifters as well up there. But overall, a pretty decent gauge setup. It would be cool if they offered a digital setup up there in the future. But either way it is pretty nice but when it comes to overall interior quality if you're looking for a power moonroof that is going to come standard on the xt trim levels and is actually optional on every single other trim level but the base so even if you want the premium you can get a power moonroof if you wanted it dual zone climate control is going to come with the premium trim level and up but i did want to mention looking around i counted eight cup holders in the 2020 legacy so if you're a thirsty family you're definitely set with the legacy that is pretty cool home link controls are going to come with the sport trim level and up i noticed that just underneath the rear view mirror that is up to three different garage doors so that's pretty cool as well also like just above the passenger side glove box there there's a nice little cubby area there with a rubberized bottom i always like the rubberized bottoms with the cubby areas so that if you go off-road or on a bumpy gravel road or something like that whatever you put there is not going to slide around as much so that's definitely a plus a lot of aluminum trim around the infotainment screen i'm going to get to that in a second of course also on the door around the air vents and there's actually a lot of soft touch or leather material including above the glove box a ton of it on the doors well done Subaru for that and also plenty of red stitching found above the glove box as well as on the seat so and there's actually a lot of soft touch leather material around the shifter once you get beyond that piano black finish directly around the shifter at least did want to also mention an electronic parking brake is going to come standard there's two USB charging ports in front of the shifter as well as an auxiliary 
port. You got some more cubby space directly behind that. Two cup holders behind the shifter. And of course, there is a dual compartment center armrest. So if you lift up on the left side, you're gonna find a little tray area. And if you lift up on the right side, you're gonna find that deeper cubby area just below that center armrest. So I like that too. And also on the ceiling, there is a sunglass holder found up there too. So overall, interior quality is quite nice. Don't wanna forget about the compass found in the rear view mirror as well. But now let's make our way to the best part. Let's face it, the tech display has been upgraded for most Subarus for 2020 and it looks absolutely amazing. So when it comes to that tech display, dual seven inch color touchscreen displays will come with the base trim level. However, that base trim level, that is the only setup that still has that old style tech display. And I say old style, it's still actually really good, but not as good as the 11.6 inch color touchscreen display that we have today that is actually going to come standard on the premium trim leveling up. But either way, you're going to get Bluetooth and audio streaming, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, meaning if you have a smartphone, simply hook it up to the legacy. You have free navigation through that smartphone, as well as the ability to like and dislike your Pandora songs. There's a couple other apps you could check out as well. Factory navigation system is standard on the XT trim levels. It's optional on all other trim levels, but the base, even the premium, that's pretty cool. And overall, this is kind of a Tesla style vertical tech display. I absolutely love that. It is kind of like a tablet or a smartphone. So if it looks slightly overwhelming at first, you do get used to it quite quickly and you'll get used to it even quicker if you've already played around with a tablet or a smartphone, which I'm sure all of you guys watching this video have. But anyways, you can also check out your radio settings up there. And by the way, when it comes to the sound system on the Legacy, four speakers with the bass, six speakers with the premium and sport trim level. So therefore that's what we have today. Limited trim level, however, is gonna give you a 12 speaker Harman Kardon sound system with 576 watts. So you guys know what we have to do next. We do again have the six speaker sound system today. So let's turn on Sirius XM here, see what we got playing this morning, and let's test out the clarity of this one. If it's between us and letting go. Gotta be honest, the clarity was on point. I don't know if it's the position of the speakers in the Legacy or what, but the clarity sounds absolutely amazing for six speakers at least. You know the Harman Kardon is gonna sound better, but for six speakers, clarity is on point. Bass is all right, it's kind of as expected for a six speaker sound system, but the clarity is, kind of impressive, I gotta be honest. But last thing I wanted to mention on that tech display though is when you do put the Legacy in reverse, you will find a rear view camera up on that tech display for every single trim level, letting you know who or what is behind you, which is always is going to lead us into safety. So to start, there are front side and side curtain airbags, also a driver's knee airbag up front as well. In the back, of course, you're gonna have latch, AKA lower anchors and tethers for children for the rear car seats. Also rear child door locks back there, tire pressure monitoring system will come standard. High beam assist, also standard for every single trim level, but perhaps the best part about the safety at least is something called Subaru EyeSight. That is gonna give you standard adaptive cruise control. This is by the way, standard on every single trim level. You have adaptive cruise control pre-collision braking, lane departure and sway warning, and lane keep assist. And then if you went with a limited trim level and up, in addition to that, you are going to get blind spot monitor with rear cross traffic alert and reverse automatic braking. Alright, so but anyways, that is about it for this one, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen there if you like. Be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're into new car reviews. That is what we do here on this channel. After all, do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys in the next video. Stay gold.